You can purchase this kit through our website, www.redsoffroad.com. We provide additional pieces to make this kit more complete. You can always call the shop at 904-347-1335 if you have any questions. First step we're going to do on the Defender is tilt the bed back and then come in right here on this. You're going to remove the duckbill cap that actually closes when you hit water, but you're going to put on the solid rubber cap with the easy turn knob hose clamp. You're going to need to remove the factory fuel vent line. It runs there, it runs up here, and it's behind the air box. Just remove those. This is what your hose will look like when completed. Next, next step, we're going to remove this the factory air intake right here. It'll be a seven millimeter clamp, and uh, the kit comes with a new clamp. You can reuse it if you want your choice. With this removed, then we're going to be installing this new clamp, and you can identify it different from the others, is it's got two notches to hold a hose. This is going to be the next piece of the kit we're going to install. As you can see, if you just fit it up, it's going to pick up these two rivets. So we're going to have to drill those out, and we'll get right back to you. Weaken the rivet by drilling with a bigger size drill bit. And then you can hit the head with a flat head and a hammer. Pop it off. Maybe easier to close the bed and get back in the buggy. So you want to come back here with a pair of side cutters and cut off as shown in the video before. And then you want to get this little bit of leftover rivet, you have to get out of the hole. So you use a center punch or a smaller punch than the hole size and tap it through. These two have been removed. These three we have left. And you want to make sure you don't drill this hole bigger than it already is. Uh, next, you're going to take these two vent lines that we had laying down to the side, and you're going to route them back up as follows. Now, the one with the filter, the one-way valve with the pink hose is gonna go up behind this cubby on this snorkel riser. And you're gonna use two of the black provided zip ties to secure it in place.
Next, we're gonna work on the water pump vent line. This should be on the factory water pump. This should be your vent line. All right, you're gonna to wanna to remove it. You will have a clear piece of 27 inch hose and some change on it. And then you already pre-cut a pink one, same size, 27 and some change. You're gonna use the connector provided and connect these two together. Now, keep in mind, the clear hose is a smaller inside diameter, so it might help if you just take a lighter or a little torch and gently heat it up without melting it to soften the rubber, and then you can easily push the connector on. Got that one. Now we'll do this one. This is what it looks like in the end with both connected together. Now you're gonna take the end of the clear end and install it onto the water pump. This is with the two new pieces installed. And next we'll install this rubber boot from the kit onto the hard pipe. That is what was removed. Next we're gonna install these three risers one here one here and the other one will be the exhaust that'll blow Some models will have this uh, cover to cover up where these come up. It's got one, two, three, four, six rivets in it that you will have to remove to be able to shut the bed. And then once you got your three hoses or three pipes attached, then you install your rivets into the steel where you drilled them out prior. Next, you'll install the P-trap with two of your black hose clamps that's included with the kit. They are eight millimeter. Next, we're gonna install the two Rubber boots, one on each side. You secure them with the black hose clamp at the base. Next, you're gonna install the black riser. Secure it with a black hose clamp and install your turn down with a black hose clamp. A 
Last you install this turn down onto the exhaust and you install the two provided torque screws to hold these secure. All right, this is not included in the BRP instructions. They do not include anything to vent the front differential higher. So you're gonna to wanna to remove this front driver side plastic. It's gonna have a push pin here and a push pin here and two 35 millimeter torxes, one here and one in this location on the back. And then this will just slide forward. You'll have one 10 millimeter bolt right here and you'll have one more or two torques one here and one here to loosen this tray up now the factory vent is the clear and it will be looped right back in here undo it and run it through this hole and then we'll go through this hole through the hole, and you'll have your vent line out here. There'll be a drain hole in the roll cage. Just send it up. Use a zip tie in this hole in your frame to secure it so it can't fall down. Once the zip tied in place and it can't fall down, you're just gonna reinstall all your hardware, reinstall your 10 millimeter in the tray. Forks tips in the tray. You have your tray hardware back in place. You come back with your fender. Basically, you just come in. These two tabs are going to go in the frame and it will just fall in place. Just like that. And install your two push pins right here. Like so. Torque screws go back in your fender over here to hold it up. So just to wrap up all the vent lines. So the factory transmission vent line is the black hose. And there it came with a new piece in the kit, but we didn't need to use it. The factory one ran up. It was long enough. We went up and it goes into this pocket on this factory snorkel tube. And then the gas tank intake hose, it also runs up with it right here with the, with the transmission vent. It goes behind this little pocket and into the cubby hole right here. All right. So then these two come over. The Can-Am BRP instructions show them just hanging out right here, which I disagree with, especially if you ride deep water. Um, so we basically used... A connector here and a connector here which I'll provide in the kit as well and uh, we use the factory fuel hose we just cut off where the connectors were and extended the water pump vent and this will be your fuel tank exhaust vent if there's too much pressure it'll vent through here and then we just kind of ran them right there and there's this hole in the frame right here in the roll cage we just send them up just like that. And just work them in. And then you're gonna secure them with a zip tie right here, just to prevent that they don't fall down. And they're literally right about where this zip tie is height-wise, inside the cage. All right, so before you go in any water or take it out on the trails, we recommend either you get it professionally smoke tested or pressure tested. Um, this one had a small leak around the lip of the air box. So we took the lid off, put a light bead of silicone around it and reassembled it and smoothed out the edges. And now the air intake is completely sealed. All right, so the air intake system 
before the engine was done. Now we're testing the belt. Okay, this is how I test snorkels in my shop. You got seal off one end, whether it be the intake or the exhaust, and then you got your other end with a tire valve in it, okay? So we're gonna charge this up to just a couple pounds of air, and you're gonna watch the rubber tube down here should expand or the belt box will push out. Do not overcharge this or you could damage a seal, crack a box, crack a tube, blow out a rubber boot. You just wanna put a couple pounds of air in it like so. And then I use a flathead screwdriver to check it. It's got air pressure, you hear that? All right, we'll let that sit for about five minutes. We'll come back and check it. If it's still got pressure, there's no leaks. If you push down and don't hear a hiss, you got a leak. And then usually you can recharge it and just listen closely with your ear and you'll hear a hiss or you can get a soapy water solution and use a spray bottle and it will bubble out towards you where the leak is. We'll come back and check this in five minutes. All right, it's been five minutes. Let's check it. Yep. We got a hiss. So now you can take this off. Sometimes it gives a little pop, but we'll see. Yep, they've kind of pressured up a little bit. So we'll just remove these, install the final risers, and the job is complete. If this video helped you or you just liked watching it, please like and subscribe to the channel. There will be plenty more videos to come. You can also follow us on Facebook to keep up with all the current builds and what we're doing in the shop. Just search Reds Off-Road.